My name is Jesse Braun with Brackus Bloom Computer Consulting, and today I'll be reviewing the purchase order module for Sage 100 Cloud. VBCC has been selling and implementing Sage products for over 30 years and is one of the top Sage solution providers in the Midwest region. We're dedicated to helping our clients continuously improve and have industry expertise that comes from years of experience and real world knowledge. In this video, I'll be reviewing the setup options, purchase order, receipt of goods and receipt of invoice entry, period end considerations, and some notable reports and Business Insights Explorer views. Let's get started. So first, what's the module used for? The purchase order module allows you to process purchase orders, receipt of goods and receipt of invoice, and all rights up to the accounts payable module for your vendor payment processing. Clients who are using inventory should definitely be using the purchase order module. It can also be used for clients who do not use inventory, but still need to provide vendors with purchase orders. Let's take a look at the software. I'm gonna start by looking at the purchase order options. On the first tab here, the most important thing to do is make sure that we're posting accounts payable invoices. This is needed so that your purchase order and accounts payable modules do not become out of sync with each other and that the purchase order receipt of invoice writes up to the AP module. You also want to make sure that you're integrating with General Ledger, Inventory, and if you're using it, Bank Reconciliation. This will make sure that all of your subsidiary modules stay in balance with each other. Generate purchase orders from sales order can be used to help you place purchase orders based on what's in your sales order. Often we find this isn't very useful to clients because you need to have your inventory planned before the sales order is actually entered. However, if you have a purchase to order business, this could be useful for you. Batch entry is used in Sage if you have multiple users doing the same task in your organization. This makes sure that each person's postings are kept separate and you don't accidentally update something that the other person wasn't ready for. If you need to divide cost among items on a purchase order, you can choose to either allocate freight only or turn on landed cost. If you have other costs to associate with items on purchase orders, like duty fees, for example, you should be turning on landed cost. Printing gives us a lot of options for what reports to print when we update our journals. The more options we choose here, the more reports you will be prompted to print when you are in your journal update process. We recommend reviewing and testing out these reports to see which ones would be most useful to you. Our history tab determines how many years of history we will retain as part of the year end process. Generally, we always recommend more than two years of history retention. Two years in SAGE means the last year and your current year only. So let's take a look at actual processing within SAGE. We're gonna start with our purchase order entry. We have defaults that can be associated with our purchase order. So for example, if we wanted to have a ship to address or a warehouse always come up by default in our purchase order, we would select that here. When we create a new order, the copy from feature becomes available. We can copy from a regular purchase order that's open, one from history, one from our receipt history, or even from accounts payable invoice history. We have a few different types of orders. Our standard order, just the basic order. We can have a drop ship order, a master order, which allows you to create a blanket purchase order that would be relieved off of as you create purchase orders, a repeating order, which gives you that template order, or a material requisition only order. Mostly, you're going to use just a standard order. When we select our vendor, it's going to populate a bunch of standard uh, default information from that vendor. You can see things like our terms code pre-populate into this. If we go to our addresses tab, you can see that this is going to be our ship to address as well as the purchasing address. Our lines tab is where we're going to enter all of our item data. Just a few things to point out about this screen. We have a primary grid and a secondary grid. Fields can be dragged from one grid to another. So I can drag up my description here and you can see now we've got item code next to our description. We can use our lookup to search for an item or we can use predictive text to select our items. One thing to note here is that some fields are available for you to change and some are not. So the ones that are not available to change are going to be grayed out. 
Our totals tab gives us a recap of what's happening on the order, and we can add an estimated freight here as well. After creating our purchase order, we can go ahead and print. All of these purchase order printing can be changed using Crystal Reports. And if I select them here and click Preview, you can see this is what the purchase order would look like. Once you've received your order, you want to move on to your receipt of goods entry. One thing I want to note about this is the ability to do a receipt of goods and a receipt of invoice at the same time. So if I select my purchase order number, you can see here if I enter an invoice number, it will now allow me to select an invoice date and have this done at the same time as my receipt of goods. If your process is to keep these two functions separate, you would just process the receipt of goods without an invoice number and then later do the receipt of invoice entry. Everything carries over from the purchase order into your receipt of goods entry. You can see that it is telling us we need to receive this amount. On our totals tab, we can add our landed cost. And so in this example, we might use our duty fees and say, we've got $10 in duty fees. When you update your receipt of goods using the daily receipt registers update, the items will be added to your inventory at the cost listed on the purchase order. So you wanna be careful and make sure that this is done with the correct cost. If you do your receipt of invoice separately, you would process your receipt of invoice, and then again, run your daily receipt registers and update. When you're done with either of these things, you also wanna make sure you post your daily transaction register. The daily transaction register posts to your general ledger accounts. If you're doing your receipt of invoice separately and there is a variance between the receipt of goods and the receipt of invoice, it will post to the purchases variance account that's assigned in your product line. So let's talk about how this module interacts with other modules. Purchase orders can be linked to sales orders if you're using dropship in your sales order. You also want to make sure that you have your purchase order module integrated with inventory and accounts payable to keep all of your subsidiary modules in balance with each other and with the general ledger. You can also integrate with job cost, work order or production management, or manufacturing or operations management if you use any of those modules. One notable thing about period end close in purchase order is the purchases clearing report. The purchases clearing report should be reviewed at least monthly, but more frequently is not a bad idea either. This report lets you check for a balance between the quantity ordered, the quantity received, and the quantity invoiced. If these are out of balance, they stay on the report. Now, as I mentioned above, you wanna make sure that you process an invoice for purchase orders through the purchase order module, not through accounts payable, as that's very important for keeping those subsidiary ledgers in balance. You can see right here, this order has been ordered and received, but not invoiced through purchase order. Let's take a look at some of the reports. You can see here, we've got various options for our purchase order report. We can have the standard, we could view it by item or by job. And we also have some options that we can look at for our purchase order history, purchase order receipt history. For Business Insights Explorer, our purchase order view is going to be useful for us. It's a great way for us to view those open purchase orders. You can see them all listed here. And you can do some kind of selection to see what's outstanding for you. You might also use the vendor history purchases view. And this will give you a better idea of what you've ordered from vendors in the past. This video covered the basics of the purchase order module. Be on the lookout for other videos covering Sage 100 cloud modules and features from Brockus Bloom Computer Consulting. If you have any questions about things you've heard here or you would like to discuss Sage 100 cloud with us, please reach out and we'll be happy to talk with you. Until then, thanks for watching.